Hey guys, all right, it's the start of the week, another week of hobby. So um, yeah, I'm looking pretty good. Um, as always happens with these, I start off really strong and, and finish a lot weaker. But um, yeah, this, this week's looking good. I got an extra day off, so hopefully I'll be able to get a bit, a bit more done, as I always try to say. Got to rant hopeful, right? So let's have a look. Uh, this is finally done. So as of this video, the, the last uh, tutorial should be up. Um, definitely go check it out. It goes through the whole process of how to uh, build up these colors and and do like this kind of skin technique and um, all the little stains and and um, hue variations that exist on this model and how to do that nice and simply and a um, little bit involved but it's it's a nice process it's not a not one that you're going to struggle through and you end up with a really nice result so I'm really happy with this um, yeah it's really cool and it's the beginnings of a of, of my Black King army so that's that's fun. Um, and then I got onto this, I started testing out um, a black armoured colour scheme for this one. So I'm going to use the blue greens in there as I've started to do with the contrast and build up that saturation. But going for like a black armour, um, you know, it's almost maybe beetle-like or something like that, I don't know. But um, with a little bit of like colour change, hopefully, as I build it up. But he should be really fun and, and, and a nice counterpoint to the, the green one there. And then uh, for this... Um, I may not get onto this this week, but um, this will be next week's tutorial. Um, we're going to do some pale armor on this guy, but treat it like flesh. So use some of the techniques we've used on flesh here, but uh, create like a pale armor for this one um, with all of those little subsurface scattering uh, colors uh, in the armor. I think that'll be really cool and set him apart from these two. So you'll have that sort of green, dark, and then pale armor. I think that'll work really well. So we may, I may start that this week, but probably not. That'll probably stay for next week's uh, tutorial. Um, and then I, I might get a bit of color on this one, because this one won't be a tutorial, but I'll try to decide on how I want to approach those robes and the, the skin underneath. And then, uh, yeah, this little one got, got put together. So that's pretty cool. So I managed to get the, um, the apparent here for the flesh eater quartz. He's ready. I've just got to fix some of the little gaps and cracks that are on him with some green stuff. And then he'll go on his base with a bunch of um, uh, skulls and stuff like that built up. So I'm going to build up the base a bit. And he'll be another tutorial as well. So we're going to tackle utilizing these kinds of, um, uh, I guess, skin coloring techniques uh, on, a, on a ghoul, on a, on a vampire. And for that, we're going to be... Um, uh, again, kind of tackling the army in a way where um, each one is going to be different. So I'll probably do a few over the course of the year um, and build that up and we'll see some variety because um, skin is really great and you can do a lot with it. So, you know, um, it's sort of a bit sad just to paint the whole army with one skin tone. You know, it's, it's kind of dull and boring when you've got like, you know, 40 or 50 of them to do. Doing all one color seems a bit sort of dull. So um, the idea will be to create variations across it so you get this nice model hue of, 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 of skin tones um, across these kind of ghoulish characters. And it'll really up, up your, your skills on, on how to paint flesh. And so I'm going to try to tackle that and, and hopefully document it so that you can see how that works and maybe get inspired to do similar things for your own um, armies. Um, and that, that, yeah, as I said, that'll just improve um, the over, your overall techniques and how you, how you approach. Uh, painting models but anyway so that's coming up um, which should be really cool and now that I've got those extra days off I should be able to um, start up the the uh, the printers and so on and get that going so very very hopefully I'll be able to show the last in my uh, denizens of Catan series for the blight of gods range um, and that'll mean I'll be able to release them and get them out in the following months the last two that are in the series and that'll be uh, six busts that will be available. Um, currently, there are four available. One is free right now. You can go to blightofgods.net slash store, which is the link in the down there, and uh, go pick up um, one of my busts and print him out and paint him up. There's a few others in there, and there's another free one as well that's perpetually free at the moment. So there's at least two there that you can get, um, or you can throw me a few dollars and um, you know buy one of the Support the Artist versions. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's really cool. So I'm looking forward to... Um, capping off that series and I've started the first miniature uh, sculpt for the brand as well so it'll be coming up uh, that's a wraith so I'm not going to show anything of that yet I'm doing a few tests but once I'm happy with it I'll, I'll definitely be showing that and um, yeah that's looking really exciting as well so yeah good start to the week so I guess I'll see you soon all right we're back and uh, finally some success 
So that's really cool. So uh, it's taken a few weeks of trials and errors, but finally, um, as you can see in front of me, uh, I got the 3D printer to work. So specifically the, the Frozen uh, 4K Mighty, the, the larger version one, um, yeah, it saved the day. <laughs> uh, I, I put the, um, the sculpt here onto the printer and yeah, it came out uh, great first time, uh, which is really good. So that just means that the, the Frozen Mini, the 4K Mini that I've got, obviously has some kind of issue um, with the LCD screen or the or maybe just the way it's configured in, in the machine itself, there's some problem. So I'll have to send that back and try to get that fixed. Um, it's still under warranty, so it should be okay. Um, but yeah, the, the Mighty certainly has, uh, you know, given me some, uh, I guess, allowed me to reevaluate <laughs> my opinion of, of those machines. Um, because if you have a look, I mean, the quality is pretty much identical to a Form 2. I mean, there's very little difference um, this is this is at about at 50 microns as well, um, or I think technically it's 52 microns uh, on their machine, but um, you know you can't tell the difference. It's very very similar. Um, yeah, I can't see any. Yeah, there's really no differences. The the build material snaps off the same way, so you can see like it leaves a few little dimple marks and stuff like that, which you can clean up after. But um, yeah, it comes out really nice. So um, you do have to. I guess do more post curing you know the the form two resin is actually really quite durable and um, it comes out a lot harder and you can just leave it out like in normal light for a while and it, it actually cures okay and i've never had any cracking on on any of the form parts and i've never post cured any of them um, and i've had them for for years now and um, none of them are breaking down or cracking or anything so um, i generally leave them out so but with it with this um resin it's definitely different like it doesn't cure that hard it's still quite soft and so you do need to post cure these parts that they, they wouldn't last otherwise um, so yeah I've got that cure, cure machine that, that, that um, Frozen has the large one the Lunar I think it's called um, and yeah about 20 minutes um, in that and yeah it came out not nice and hard I don't think it's gonna crack or anything like that it seems pretty good so yeah the quality is really nice so he should come up really good I'm gonna start painting him now and um, yeah, well, hopefully by the end of this vlog, you'll see some some paint work on him. Um, but yeah, that's really exciting. So I thought I'd bring you back in just to, you know, finally get some results after a few weeks of sort of depressing kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I guess, uh, fighting with printers. It's finally uh, paid off, and we've got we've got a result, which is really nice. So he, he's he's going to be released in May. He'll be free for the month of May to download um, from the Denizens of Catan series that's on my Blood of Gods website and in, in the store. Uh, the links in the down there if you want to go check it out. There is currently a free uh, two free ones available right now. Uh, this month's one, April's release, uh, and the initial release one that I did um, that's just staying free as kind of like a product sample, so you can uh, see my sculpting style and see how they print. I mean, you can see it here. It comes out really good, um, but you know they're just there if you want them, um, and that's really good that this is continuing now, so I can get on to the the next exciting step, which is to uh, generate some you know figures on in in this sort of scale. So the first one I, I think I've talked about before is the wraith, um, and uh, yeah, I've already set up the blocked out the the pose and everything, and it's looking really cool. So I'm, I'm trying to tell a bit of a narrative or a story with it. Um, the the wraith. You know, in, in the Blighted Gods world, kind of, um, you know, they're they're really hungry for magic. So they're like a um, they're like a um, like a I guess a wizard or a you know necromancer or something like that that ha has uh, died and their essence has stayed on. You know, let's say <clears throat> uh, via curse or via other other reasons or just their their hunger for power and knowledge and 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 magic uh, keeps something of the of them going past death. Um, you know, maybe some of their spells have gone wrong and um, their longevity spells have have, have uh, not worked and so they've ended up in this wraith like state and. Um, they're basically just, you know, a hunger machine for, for, for magical energies. So they just roam around, you know, trying to consume as much as possible. And um, which isn't a new concept for wraiths or anything. I don't think, I think most wraiths have a similar kind of idea. But um, the difference being is that um, as they absorb these things into themselves, um, they kind of become little entities that are sort of, um, I guess, linked in some way and they can come out of their bodies and so on. So I've got this... Um, 
the robes sort of as they flow around the, the wraith, you know, reveal, you know, other little entities, little arms coming out, you know, so it has like multi-armed kind of thing, but like little faces and stuff. And, and those entities um, also become part of that hunger as well. So they're, they're trying to grasp at things and, and pull things into them um, as part of the wraith. And um, so as you turn the model around, um, so let's, I'll use this as an example because it's actually on a similar kind of uh, pose actually. It's got a, a piece of tombstone coming up out of the ground which is going to have like either, um, you know, like scrolls or, um, or magical books. And the idea is, is that his, the wraith is kind of coming up in this pose like resting on a piece of tombstone sort of thing. Um, and then one arm is uh, grabbing a, um, the magical artifacts. Uh, while he's looking in kind of some something like that direction um, and then behind he's got another arm coming down here that's holding like a familiar that he's uh, you know he's already um, you know killed or whatever and is absorbing into his body and then you have <clears throat> behind will be two little you know sort of I guess fairy imps or um, you know little magical creatures that are that are attracted to the the, the items that are in this tomb, but they're they're now hiding, and so they're sort of hiding behind there, looking up to see if they can get away from him. Um, and he's not even interested; he's looking off off into the distance at something else that he's trying to consume. But all his arms, and there'll be extra ones coming out, and little faces. They're all kind of doing a different thing around the piece, so that you'll end up with um, kind of like a little narrative story as you as you turn it around. You'll get different different views and different interesting kind of um, I guess uh, poses. Um, sort of inspired by this, I was looking at this going, I really like um, what's going on here. And, and when you turn this around, you get like a nice different silhouettes and different kind of looks. Um, so I kind of use that as an inspiration to kind of um, tell a story with my Wraith. Um, and you know, that, that sort of classic thing with the tombstone thing is in plenty of like night one models and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's not a new thing, but um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. So I'm, I'm really enjoying sculpting that. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, but I'll be able to do some tests now. So you'll see those on, on these uh, vlogs coming forward in, into the next few weeks and stuff. I should start to muck around with that. I've still got one more of these uh, to do. So that'll be probably next week. And then, um, yeah, and then after that, after they're done, then I'll be going full, full tilt into some uh, miniatures. So that'll be the first ones for the brand, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty interesting, but um, yeah, things are looking positive this week, so that's really nice. And uh, yeah, hopefully it continues, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope everyone else is doing uh, well with their hobbies and, and all that kind of stuff, and 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 you know, getting some work done. And um, yeah, I guess I'll catch you soon, hopefully with um, a painted, well at least semi-painted uh, bust there. All right, catch you soon. All right, I'm back. So it's the end of the week and uh, yeah, I've made some progress. So pretty happy, you know, it's, it's a good start. Um, let's take a look. So he's got all his uh, bass tones on. So what I'm gonna do now with this one, so I decided to go for um, a similar uh, color palette to um, the Blight King here, just to practice that technique and um, play with those colors some more because I really liked uh, the glazing and stuff that went onto this and, and, and how it changed the colors. So I'm going to be using a similar method um, for this one because I think that type of flesh, slightly pinky yellowy kind of flesh will work really well for him. So um, yeah, if you want to see how that's done, just check out the Blight Kings, the, uh, sorry, uh, Blight Kings uh, tutorial. And that's got the, the subsurface scattering layers, like all that glazing and stuff, as well as there's like a how to paint monster flesh as well. Um, which also has some of that in it, in it too. So yeah, I think that that'll work really well for this one. Um, yeah, so hopefully sometime next week he'll be done. I'll be able to take some nice photos of him. And uh, then yeah, he'll be available next month. So that's really looking positive and it means I can get on with doing the last one in the series um, with, the, with the printer running and yeah, should be all good. So I'll do a little bit more over the weekend and then yeah, the next hobby vlog will show yeah, whatever the next stage is. So I think I'll be doing um, a tutorial for this uh, doing like the I think I've mentioned it before um, like a pale pale armor for this one but like treating it like flesh so doing all of those kind of colors in, in, into the armor and stuff like that which I think will be really fun um, pretty nice little um, idea for a Nurgle champion like this with this sort of armor on I think it'll be uh, sort of like nice flat areas and stuff like that to really play around with that kind of idea so that'll be cool and what else hopefully I'll get this one 
um, a bit more finished and start working on the base and putting all the skulls and different things on it, which would be really cool. And yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But um, yeah, it's looking positive. It's nice. So I guess that's pretty much it for this week. I um, hope you're all having a good hobby week, a good hobby weekend by now and you're getting some stuff done. But otherwise, um, I guess I'll catch you on the next one. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, oh, I suppose I should say this stuff. Uh, please subscribe, all that sort of things. You know, push the notify button, all that kind of stuff. It really helps me out. But otherwise, yeah, I'll catch you next time.